In the heart of St. Louis, where the veil between the known and the supernatural grew thin, a chilling tale began to unfurl. The quietude of the town was shattered by the passing of Aunt Harriet, triggering a series of bizarre events that would plunge a family into the depths of the paranormal. Strange noises echoed through the once serene family home, unsettling the residents. Furniture danced in inexplicable patterns, and ordinary objects defied gravity, taking flight in the presence of a young boy. Distraught and desperate for answers, the family turned to their Lutheran pastor, Luther Miles Schulze, a man with a keen interest in the enigmatic realms of parapsychology. Pastor Schulze, sensing an otherworldly force at play, invited the boy to spend a night in his own home. What unfolded within the confines of the pastor's residence blurred the lines between reality and the supernatural. As Schulze observed, household objects and furniture moved with a will of their own, leaving even the pastor questioning the nature of the phenomena. Parapsychologist Joseph Banks Rhine, upon hearing Schultz's account, wondered if the pastor had unconsciously embellished certain details, casting doubt on the unfolding narrative. The family, grappling with the unsettling revelations, received an ominous suggestion from Schultz, consult a Catholic priest. The stage was set for a battle between the earthly and the ethereal, taking the form of a series of exorcisms that would plunge them into a realm of darkness. Enter Edward Hughes, a Roman Catholic priest, who undertook the daunting task of performing an exorcism on the boy at Georgetown University Hospital, a Jesuit institution. Within the sacred halls, the possession unfolded like a malevolent symphony. The boy's hand slipped from restraints, a makeshift weapon fashioned from a bedspring slashed through the air, leaving the priest wounded and the exorcism abruptly halted. Undeterred, the family sought refuge in St. Louis. Roland's cousin reached out to a professor at St. Louis University Bishop who, in turn, sought the assistance of William S. Bowdern, an associate of College Church. Together, these emissaries of faith ventured into the heart of the supernatural maelstrom, Roland's relative's home. There, they bore witness to a bed shaking with an otherworldly force, objects taking flight, and the boy uttering guttural voices with an aversion to all things sacred. Blessed by the Archbishop's permission, Baudern prepared to engage in a second exorcism, a ritual that would unfold within the walls of the Alexian Brothers Hospital in South St. Louis. As the exorcism drew near, additional reinforcements arrived in the form of Walter Halloran and William Van Roo, both Jesuit priests, ready to confront the malevolent entity that had ensnared young Roland. Within the psychiatric wing of the hospital, Halloran, called upon to assist Bodern, bore witness to a scene that transcended the boundaries of the conceivable. The very words evil and hell manifested on Roland's body, accompanied by various other mysterious marks. As the litany of the saints echoed through the room, the boy's mattress began to shake, a manifestation of the supernatural forces at play. In the midst of this macabre ballet, Roland lashed out, breaking Halloran's nose in a fit of otherworldly strength. The culmination of the exorcism left its mark on both the priests and the possessed. Halloran, reflecting on the aftermath, spoke to a reporter, revealing that the anonymous subject of the exorcism went on to lead a rather ordinary life. The turbulent chapter in Roland's existence, one that blurred the lines between the natural and the supernatural, concluded with an eerie return to normalcy. The tale of Roland, a boy ensnared by forces beyond comprehension, echoed through the corridors of St. Louis like a haunting melody. In the annals of the town's history, this eerie episode remained etched, a testament to the fragile boundaries that separated the seen from the unseen, the known from the unknown. And so, the tale of Roland, the possessed boy, became a whispered legend a story that transcended the realms of belief, forever etched in the haunted tapestry of St. Louis. Yet this was not the end. It was merely the prologue to a more extensive narrative, an exploration into the shadowy realms of the supernatural that would continue to haunt the town of St. Louis for generations to come. The whispers of the townsfolk, hushed conversations in darkened corners, and the occasional fleeting glimpse of a figure in the shadows all hinted at the lingering presence of an otherworldly force. 
As the years passed, the legend of Roland grew, transforming into a cautionary tale parents whispered to their children around dimly lit fires. The tale took on a life of its own, weaving its way into the fabric of local folklore. Many claim to have encountered spectral echoes of Roland, his tortured cries still reverberating through the town's haunted alleyways. In the quiet solitude of St. Louis, the supernatural continued to leave its indelible mark. Those who delved into the town's history found themselves captivated by the enigmatic story of Roland. Scholars, investigators, and thrill-seekers flocked to the town, drawn by the promise of uncovering the truth behind the paranormal occurrences that had gripped St. Louis in a vice of fear. Among the intrepid seekers of truth was Dr. Eleanor Bennett, a renowned parapsychologist with a fascination for the inexplicable. Intrigued by the tales of Roland, she embarked on a journey to St. Louis, armed with her knowledge and a determination to unravel the mysteries that lingered in the town's shadows. Dr. Bennett's arrival stirred the quiet town, and whispers of her quest reached even the ears of those who had long kept silent. The descendants of Roland's family, burdened by the weight of a spectral legacy, hesitantly agreed to share their stories with the intrepid investigator. As the tales unfolded, Dr. Bennett found herself ensnared in a web of supernatural occurrences that defied the boundaries of her rational understanding. As she delved deeper into the history of St. Louis, Dr. Bennett unearthed forgotten manuscripts, dusty tomes, and the cryptic writings of those who had grappled with the supernatural in ages past. The town's archives revealed a tapestry of encounters with the unknown, each thread weaving a story of inexplicable phenomena unexplained disappearances, and spectral apparitions. The more Dr. Bennett uncovered, the more she realized that Roland's tale was merely a chapter in the rich narrative of St. Louis, haunted history. The town, it seemed, was a nexus of supernatural energy, a focal point where the veil between the worlds was thin, allowing the ethereal to bleed into the corporeal. Her quest led her to the very locations where Roland's possession had unfolded, the family home, the Jesuit institution, and the psychiatric wing of the hospital. In each place, she felt the lingering echoes of the past, as if the spirits of those who had grappled with the supernatural still lingered in the shadows. As Dr. Bennett pieced together the fragments of the paranormal puzzle, she began to sense a pattern, a malevolent force that had cast its shadow over St. Louis for centuries. The tales of Roland were not isolated incidents, but threads woven into a tapestry of darkness that stretched back through the town's storied past. Driven by an insatiable curiosity, Dr. Bennett sought to confront the very heart of the supernatural maelstrom that gripped St. Louis. Her journey took her to forgotten burial grounds, ancient crypts, and abandoned places where the veil between the worlds seemed to waver. The townsfolk, initially wary of the investigator, began to see her as a beacon of hope against the encroaching darkness. The whispers of Roland's haunting became a rallying cry, urging the townspeople to confront the malevolent force that had plagued their town for generations. As Dr. Bennett delved deeper into the heart of the supernatural, she encountered spectral entities, vengeful spirits, and echoes of long-forgotten tragedies. The town itself seemed to come alive with an otherworldly energy, responding to her presence with phenomena that defied explanation. The climax of her journey led her to a long-forgotten shrine hidden deep within the heart of St. Louis. There, surrounded by the echoes of centuries-old rituals and the residue of supernatural energies, she confronted the malevolent force that had ensnared Roland and cast its shadow over the town. In a climactic battle between the rational and the supernatural, Dr. Bennett stood as a bulwark against the encroaching darkness, the very fabric of reality seemed to tremble as the forces clashed, and the town of St. Louis became the battleground for a struggle that transcended the boundaries of the seen and the unseen. As Dr. Bennett faced the malevolent force head-on, the town held its breath. The whispers that had long haunted St. Louis fell silent, replaced by an eerie stillness that gripped the air. For a moment, it seemed as if time itself had frozen, and the very essence of the supernatural maelstrom held its breath. Then, with a shudder that reverberated through the town, the malevolent force recoiled. Dr. Bennett, bathed in an ethereal glow, stood triumphant against the encroaching darkness. 
The supernatural energies that had plagued St. Louis for centuries began to dissipate, like morning mist evaporating under the sun's gaze. In the aftermath of the climactic confrontation, St. Louis found itself free from the grip of the supernatural. The town, once shrouded in darkness, basked in the light of a newfound peace. Dr. Bennett, hailed as a savior by the townspeople, bid farewell to St. Louis, leaving behind a legacy that would be whispered about for generations. As the years passed, the tale of Dr. Eleanor Bennett and the supernatural struggle in St. Louis became a cornerstone of the town's folklore. The once haunted corridors echoed with the footsteps of residents who walked with newfound confidence, knowing that the darkness that had long lingered had been banished. Yet, in the quiet moments of the night, when the moon cast its silvery glow over the town, some claimed to hear the faint whispers of Roland's ghost. It was said that he lingered, not as a vengeful spirit, but as a guardian, watching over St. Louis to ensure that the encroaching darkness would never again take root. And so, the town of St. Louis became a symbol of resilience against the supernatural, a place where the veil between the worlds had been tested and, against all odds, held strong. The legend of Roland, Dr. Bennett, and the battle against the malevolent force became a cautionary tale, a reminder that even in the face of the unknown, the human spirit could triumph. As the sun dipped below the horizon, casting long shadows over the town, the residents of St. Louis embraced the night with a newfound courage. The echoes of the supernatural struggle faded into the background, replaced by the ordinary sounds of a town at peace. But legends have a way of enduring, and in the hushed corners of St. Louis, where the shadows still danced, the tale of Roland and the battle against the malevolent force lived on. Perhaps, in the cyclical nature of the supernatural, another chapter awaited and the town would once again find itself at the crossroads between the known and the unknowable. As the final chapter of this supernatural saga closed, the legacy of Roland and the indomitable spirit of St. Louis became intertwined, forever etched in the annals of the town's history. The tale, like a ghostly whisper, lingered in the air, inviting those who dared to listen into the mysterious depths of the unknown.